morning, everybody. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. Nice to see you again. So this is our final day of the final management meeting, and this, it is my pleasure to ask our Irish partners, General Kavanagh and Patrick Kirby, to present their nice presentation. Okay. <coughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just while Porik is, uh, while, while we're trying to uh, sort out the difficulties with the uh, memory stick, uh, somewhere between China and here, the uh, information that was on the stick seems to have uh, gone missing, right? So uh, he's trying to fix that one. So anyway, just on behalf of myself and Porik, uh, you know, we're delighted to see this part of the project. Uh, not that we're delighted to see the end of the project, but we're, like to see, we're delighted to see that everything that we said that we set out to do uh, at the beginning of the project has now come to this stage where uh, we actually have the final meeting and everything uh, that we set out to do is delivered. Uh, it's been a fantastic opportunity for us again to work uh, here we have obviously worked uh, with a Erasmus or Tempest project previously in Aspire, uh, which will be mentioned uh, just briefly uh, later on. But uh, I suppose our journey uh, from the Limerick Institute of Technology being involved in these projects uh, started about uh, maybe 10 years ago. Um, and we've been, we've been involved and we are involved quite heavily uh, in projects. Uh, a lot of our projects have to do with uh, libraries, uh, but also uh, with academic writing and uh, plagiarism and uh, basically helping students uh, achieve better when they go to university and that also includes uh, people with disabilities. Uh, and this particular project uh, is very important because it's to build a network uh, and that's what has been done here uh, by uh, the, the Library Network Support Services, and that's in Armenia, in uh, in Armenia, in Belarus, and in Moldova. Um, so that combination, it's it's very hard to uh, build a network like this because um, uh, the cooperation that's needed uh, is you know is very important. Um, and then to be able to come out at the end of the project like we have to date uh, with these eight modules which will be very significant in the development of libraries in these three countries over the next uh, maybe decade, they'll be very important because these are the tools that libraries need to uh, develop, the skills that librarians need particularly. Because if you go back uh, you know, over the centuries, uh, and you go back to the the, uh, the first libraries, or if uh, you know, there were big places, big rooms with lots of information in them, right? Uh, and only the wealthy, or only the uh, chosen people, were allowed to enter these places to get information. And Information was a very scarce resource. It was very difficult to get answers to any type of questions. And then as time progressed and information became more prevalent uh, and printing and uh, the printing press and the, the, the era of the book. And then the explosion that actually happened with the internet. It actually changed the dynamic that what was uh, almost, where, where it was almost impossible to get an answer to information, it is now the challenge is how do you actually get the answer within the vast array of information that's actually out there? Uh, because the uh, the internet uh, has, you know, it, it has caused this this confusion almost of uh, of information where you have uh, you have very uh, high quality information which is available on the internet with very dubious information and uh, as uh, one of the great leaders of the free world 
uh, has said in recent times, uh, and I, I said that with tongue in cheek, uh, the, the leader of the free world, when he's talking about fake news, uh, the same can be said about uh, fake information, um, you know, what is true information. So this is, this is the challenge for a lot of uh, young students is how do they get to uh, the stage where they can identify what is uh, good information. Uh, and not only information which is actually available on the internet, but information where, where to find even in your own libraries. Uh, and these are the skills that um, these are the skills that the librarian needs to uh, be aware of is how to actually challenge uh, how to channel, channel, challenge uh, the student to equip themselves with the uh, you know with the skills so that they so that the student can identify which is the most important uh, information. Um, and that's what these eight, eight modules set out to do. Um, so, and it, within this project, you have these very uh, good eight modules, but you also have uh, the development of the libraries in the partner countries. So, the actual infrastructure has improved uh, greatly, and I think that's that's uh, a great achievement as well. Um, so, you know, going forward, uh, for if you. you know, if you look at what we set out to do was to develop libraries in, in these three particular countries. Uh, you know, you can start with, uh, you know, if you're going to develop a library and you have a lot of money. If you're uh, the rector or the, uh, the chancellor of a particular university, you can decide if you have a lot of money to build a fantastic building. And that's great if you have a lot of money. Or you can decide that you're, you'll build a fantastic uh, library and you'll equip it with the most advanced technologies that money can buy. And that's fantastic if you have the money, you know. Uh, or you can decide that you're going to equip the staff with the knowledge that they need to provide really good services for the, uh, for the, for the university community which is not just for students, but is also for teachers. And I think the best value that you'll actually get is if you actually start to develop from the libraries first, then enhance that with the technologies, and then enhance that with the building, not the other way around. Don't go the other way, which is build the library first, and then try and get the staff uh, equipped to provide the good services. I, I believe it's better if you do the, other, the way I've just described it, which is enhance the staff, use the technology, and then enhance the building. Uh, so that's what we set out to do with this uh, library network uh, support services. So uh, this uh, is the end of a three year project. We're very happy to have worked with, with everybody sitting around here uh, sitting around the table over the last three years I've met you in many countries uh, uh, both in the partner countries and in Ireland uh, it's been a great experience uh, it's sad that we come to this uh, this end part uh, but we hope to develop uh, maybe more projects with you uh, in the future it has uh, we're talking about maybe doing something on academic writing uh, which we hope uh, to collaborate with you in the future. Uh, so, for me, I'd just like to say thanks to Teresa and all the other uh, partners, all the EU partners, and, uh, and say thanks very much. And over the next day or two, hopefully, uh, we'll get to talk and maybe socialise. And if anybody has any questions, it would be great. But, uh, for me, thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you very much, Jerry. With our equipment, I think there was a virus there because Patrick lost his files uh, on the stick. No, the, uh, this is not our fault. <laughs> we all lost our information on our yeah. sticks. Yeah. Oh, it's Academy of Public this, Relations. Uh, you never know. Penalty to the Rodigan. Okay, I think to have it from somewhere else. Okay, can okay. you bring okay. this up onto this? Your, with your laptop? Okay. Yeah. yeah. What's wrong with that computer? 
Yeah, you got an hour and a half, and I'll tell you. Somebody else has. It's a big problem. Anyway. Yeah, sure. We'll 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 Okay, uh, so we're just getting ready to start. Uh, I had a problem there with my, with my stick. Uh, it seems to, this laptop seems to wipe everything, but luckily I had a copy on this uh, computer that I brought with me. So uh, we'll just get going then. Uh, so this is uh, about best practice, LIT, library. Um, so just to start with, um, in light of the new call that's coming up for capacity building, um, if anybody is interested in working with us again or in the future sometime, this is, these are the types of areas that we've been involved in o over the years. Um, obviously libraries development and uh, modernization, uh, information literacy, um, access to libraries and education for people with uh, special needs. Um, we're also, we've also been involved in projects to do with doctoral students, uh, improving doctoral services for students, doctors, uh, you know, doc hubs and things like that. Um, we're also involved in projects about vocational education and training and e-learning module development. We're, we're specialists in, in this uh, area and uh, particularly in the information literacy and uh, libraries. And finally, then also um, academic writing. We were also involved in projects with academic writing. So, as one of the aims of this meeting, I guess, is to talk about possibilities for future collaboration. We said we would just mention this to you. Please come to talk to us if you have any ideas or if you'd like to work with us again. Um, so, uh, We've been very much involved in projects uh, to do with information literacy, as I mentioned, and one of the main features of uh, this project are the uh, modules to do with information literacy. I think there's uh, two or three, two on information literacy, if I'm correct. And what information literacy is, it's a set of, I guess we don't need to tell you three years into the project, but just as a reminder, it's a set of abilities requiring individuals to recognize when information is needed and have the ability to locate, evaluate and use effectively the needed information. So this phrase was coined by this Paul Zerkowski, who will be very familiar to us all now at this stage. Um, he coined this phrase information literacy in 1974 in a paper that he wrote. And what's interesting about him is that he um, he wasn't actually a, an academic at all. He was somebody uh, involved in, in, in the newspaper uh, industry. But he's credited with inventing this phrase or coining this phrase or whatever way you, you would like to look at it. And this has been very important in the Arme this LNSS project in Armenia in information literacy. And uh, it's often seen as kind of an, an antidote to the problems of fake news that we hear about more and more. Um, and it has developed in line with the, the development of, of the internet, you know, as a way of trying to evaluate if the information that's found on the in internet is um, reliable or not. Uh, so, then this information literacy, uh, just two of the important things about it, and really you, this is something you should consider after this project has ended, that it, it, it's a lifelong learning skill, so you need to continue teaching your students about this and teaching your library staff after this project is gone. And it's a transferable skill, you know, in the same way that knowing how to read or how to write or use a computer is also a transferable skill. And this is why it's so important. And it also has relevance on, a, a, you know, across uh, disciplinary. It's, it affects all disciplines, uh, you know, all academic disciplines. It's multidisciplinary. And this is why that the role of the librarian is so important nowadays. So, um, I mentioned Paul Zerkowski. As you know, there's another project um, 
uh, to do with libraries in, in, in the Western Balkans. And we were very lucky to have Paul Zerkowski as a keynote speaker in 2015 at our Western Balkan Information Literacy Conference. And that's just him there in the center, um, there um, sitting down. Um, and this is just another photo from the Western Balkan Information Literacy Conference. Uh, and this man on the left, He's actually from uh, the Balkan region. He's also a very, very significant person in information literacy and libraries, uh, Professor Tefko Sarasovic. Um, and there he is beside Paul Zerkowski and uh, Gerald in, in the center. And that's also from the conference in 2015. So uh, as we finish this project uh, here today, uh, just really we want to emphasize again the importance of information literacy. Um, there's some famous quotes there from uh, Bruce, and you see there the, it mentions the word evaluate, and this has become really of all the, 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 the information literacy skills more and more, this is one that's coming to, to the fore as being the most important, along with uh, areas like plagiarism. Um, this is also you know, a very uh, prominent theme. And you know, evaluation skills, as I mentioned, have become more and more important uh, because of the problems and, and the dangers uh, of the internet. And information literacy has emerged as a central purpose for librarians. So it's not uh, exclusively associated with librarians, but librarians have taken up this, I guess, and they're most often associated and seen as the leaders in this area, um, this area of information literacy. And, and because of that, then, in recent years, there has been this phenomenal push towards librarians demonstrating their pedagogical uh, skills. Uh, so, information literacy has, especially over the last decade, become a core function of academic libraries and <coughs> librarians. Um, so, just moving on, then, uh, it's also associated with this concept of uh, digital citizenship. Um, and you know, it's it's basically that it goes back to this concept of, of of lifelong learning, of information literacy, of this transferable skill that that you need throughout your lifetime. Um, and we've been involved in uh, projects uh, to do with the libraries even before we were involved. You know, uh, multi-institution projects even before we started this project in in Armenia. Moldova, Belarus, even well before we started the project in the Balkans. We had this project which we led in, in Ireland, uh, also uh, Library Network Support Services, and we um, implemented information literacy and staff development initiatives across four um, institutions in Ireland, Limerick Institute of Technology, the University of Limerick, which probably, I guess, owing to this project, most people would, would, would have visited at some stage. They have quite a spectacular library now. Um, the, the, also the Institute of Technology, Trilly and Mary Immaculate College. So we, we've been involved in this area for a long time. And recently we were uh, awarded uh, the, the, this um, ed education award for our contribution to project activities. Uh, and we were awarded this in 2018. So we're very committed to this, uh, you know, to building up libraries on, on the project level. Um, now, so just to, to talk more specifically about the LNSS and the Armenia, Moldova, Belarus project, uh, we were really delighted to be involved in this project. And uh, this is just some, uh, it illustrates some of our involvement. Um, it began with this English for specific purposes training. So things have come full circle. We're back here again in uh, Chisinau and in Balti. So that's where. We, we began our journey from, you know, visiting your country point of view. And so that's just some imagery from that English for Specific Purposes training, April 7 and 8, 2016, at the Academy of Public Administration in Chisinau. Um, we also, after that then, we were in Minsk in Belarus and also um, Grodno. Uh, I think it was Grodno first. Brest, actually, no, Brest first where we did more English for, English for specific purposes training. And 
And then we had this, this really important training in uh, Limerick, which was hosted by ourselves, obviously, and that's just some more uh, footage there of partners. We see our partners there from uh, Germany, Manolis uh, from Greece, uh, Jerry from the pyramid group, Angela uh, from Romania. Uh, and um, and also, you know, one of these significant, you know, possibly the most uh, significant uh, achievements of this project has been this uh, LNSS curriculum. And this is, is, is a totally original uh, curriculum, which I guess will probably be replicated in, into the future in other places maybe, which we designed actually, um, it, it was written by Limerick Institute of Technology, um, and this has never, had never been expressed before in this way, this eight modules, which we try to encompass uh, all the different um, areas which uh, any member of uh, library staff, anywhere I guess, would, we felt would need to learn about to be uh, you know, proficient. Okay, there's lots of library schools out there, but the, there was no training program as such which tried to encapsulate all of these areas, and this is what we attempted to do. And I guess it's been very interesting to watch how the curriculum has been implemented in both countries and see the differences and see the uh, similarities which uh, are, are good in some cases and not so good in other cases but we'll see how, how all that plays out and um, so this is just uh, more about sharing best practice um, uh, this was uh, when we went to pilot training. We, we, we were back in Minsk, in Belarus, in at the end of 2016. And this is uh, most recently then, not so long ago, we were in Yerevan. Uh, I think Yerevan and Armenia was the only country that we had not um, visited as part of our activities. So we got the opportunity to visit that last month, actually. And here we have... Um, some imagery there from that training with uh, Teresa and with the rector Lokian, uh, Gerard Kavala and myself at that training um, in uh, Yerevan and we also did training in, in Goris uh, a couple of days before that so it was really nice to get this opportunity to do these master class trainings in Goris and, um, and Yerevan um, where we, you know, we, we, we have a long-standing uh, relationship with, with, with these partners. Uh, so, so this is just more imagery there from just some of the library visits that we undertook as part of the uh, training uh, in, in Boris and Yerevan from the 6th to the 13th of September 2018 and some more imagery there. So that's just uh, our... Um, our contribution to this project. Uh, I think the title of this presentation was sharing best practice and this is really what our aim has been in uh, as librarians, what our aim has been over the past 10 to 15 years is to try to share best practice and try to build collaboration and build you know, uh, large networks of, uh, of uh, universities who we can work with to modernize uh, libraries and uh, you know to build information literacy programs in these countries uh, so thanks uh, thanks for your time uh, apologies again for the delay and i hope we haven't gotten too much over time going to um, the old stick anyway thanks very much thank you Thank you, Patrick. Thank you very much. Next presenter is Jerry. Sorry? Yes. Yes. So you can start. Yeah. 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 <coughs> On the fly, Jerry. We'll On the fly. Yeah, we'll try. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Listen, um, very briefly, <coughs> two items. The first is that um, we just like to mention that before we did this project, we were and we, meaning NIT, the permanent group, PARA, and Gora State University, we were in a project on special needs called Aspire. It's a Tempest project. And actually, 
the website is still up, so if you Google Aspire Tempest, you will find the website with description and the modules, etc. Now, going back to what Gerald and Porrick uh, were dwelling on, where do we go from here? Because in Minsk, in the summer, we discussed a number of ideas, and uh, we're trying to focus on libraries in the future. And the most solid idea, probably as a build-up onto the LNS, would be academic writing. And what we're looking at here is support for masters and PhD students. So to research, to write thesis. And the focus would be in a project like this, in my opinion, um, I talked briefly with Gerald this morning as well, would be a library that has a writing centre that is a service for all the faculties. Because sometimes people get a little bit confused when they talk about masters and PhD in English. We're not talking about faculty of English or faculty of languages, but all the faculties at the university. And engineering students are also expected now step by step to do a research and do a thesis in English. And from the last time I was in Russia, we noticed that a lot of Russian professors right through science, engineering, IT, are expected now to be published abroad in high profile journals. And to do this, it's not a case of translating from Russian into English because it doesn't work. It's a specific style, specific approach, specific sentence constructions. So, this seems to be the most feasible um, project idea that can follow logically on from LMS. We can identify it possibly as a gap in this project or as a need that came up. Have you any comments on this, Teresa? Or, sorry, Angela. We have a project with 18 universities in Moldova. We have a meeting Monday, mm -hmm. and we already built academic writing center there. It's a product of the so project. So they're out, are they? Okay, no, we, we can think because this mm -hmm. academic writing center, we were thinking only for students, somehow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can so build on this. Yeah. They have experience yeah. already. Mm -hmm. Their rectors have been in uh, Norway, and they decided to support universities. So these two, let's say it's, it's a good, can be a synergy about this, because they will start, I don't know. If we uh, apply in February, it will be OK to say that we're starting for students and we go. What is important for PhDs, there are a lot of classes for academic staff. They not know where to publish, how to publish, how to have impact, how to increase visibility. At least in these countries, when we started with uh, evaluation of yeah, academic... It will be a little m m module, module for scientometrics, not for yes, writing. Yes, scientometrics, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Just to know this, uh, to, to put, not somebody who knows to put, a, 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 let's say, a, a bad word somewhere. No, no. Yeah. no it's better well, to yeah. know. Yeah, and you. it's good to have synergy, yes, with the other yeah, project sure. and things like that. Okay. That sounds, Thank that you sounds good. The, the, so we kind of look at two goals then, um, MA and PhD support, but not only for students but also for professors. We, yes. we have colleagues, for example, in Dusseldorf and they are changing to English and the professors, some of them find it extremely challenging even to evaluate an MA paper. They say, do we look at the English? aspect or do we just look at the pure science content so there's a huge field there if i may comment yesterday may. i had a, a slide mind's a gap between academic staff and mm -hmm. librarians and in the morning i decided with manolis let's delete because i have a lot of academic staff from my university and not to understood that it's a gap but it is yeah. in reality it is yeah. because uh, i don't know if you agree but uh, uh, how many professors are going to library and uh, Okay. If Even in number, the case you are like so that. promoting. Yes, it. yes, yes, yes. And there are new things, new technology, new databases, new approach. So I, I think very, very importantly, <laughs> though, you know, having worked in not only in this region but in many other regions and other countries, 
it's the you know for to, for to sell that idea of getting academic staff and and particularly students whether it be postgrads or phd students the difficulty is the perception of what the role of the library is mm -hmm. and the function of a library you know in these regions because the professors particularly you know would maybe feel a little bit uh, intimidated that they have to go to the library to learn these skills because, you know, I, I'm just talking about the sensitivities. So it's the way that you actually write the proposal would have to be, and, uh, uh, you know. Last week, I, uh, no, two weeks ago, I have been to European Conference in Information Literacy and I presented a paper with uh, people from uh, ASEM, Natalia Keratin and Anne Lando and me, about academic writing centers in Moldova. Mm -hmm. And we presented this paper and our, uh, we made a survey to, to director of the libraries from uh, Moldova. And um, uh, in the beginning, we searched a bit how is the situation in the world. And uh, even in American universities, they have academic writing centers to the library, but not everywhere to the library. They mm. build separately. Yeah, it have and to we be. have to point this. Library have to be the important in this and things yes, like that. Yes. The because center, academics build yeah. a center and they believe like this. But the, <laughs> I think the center would be the, you know, the selling point yes, for it. Yes. Because if it's called the academic writing library center something like that it, it, it will there will be a difficulty if it's called the academic writing center and leave out the word library and you put in that it is coordinated between the academics and the library staff Maybe and a, and a partnership a partnership between the academics because it's academics teaching academics and it's library staff assisting the academic staff you know so and that's a good point as well. The props can be very sensitive because yeah. originally we tried to train props in groups and there was this huge suspicion and nervousness and in the end we went to one-on-one -on -one tuition. Mm. It was more effective and it was far more relaxing. It's a very sensitive issue. If it's a centre, uh, you know, and you have, you know, you've scheduled classes for academics and you've scheduled classes for postgraduates and undergraduates. There's nobody intimidated by the fact that they're going to a centre to learn. But if it's one group identified as that they are in charge of it, that's where your difficulty arises. So just having a centre, an academic writing centre, creating an academic writing centre, you know, even with respect to what you already have in Moldova. Not so much, but it's no, that little. But yeah, yeah, but even with respect to what you have in Moldova, you will find great resistance from certain groups to doing that. Whereas if you, you know, like, and when you talked about the synergies, if you talk about, uh, you know, what you have, and if we put in a similar application for an academic writing center, and we said that there is a, a prototype, which is a library writing center mm -hmm. in Belarus, then it would be easily included. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas uh, I, I think the idea would be to have an academic writing center yeah. and the library supporting that yeah. and other academics yeah, supporting that. Yeah. Yeah. And about the new project Minerva, so we can insist on it that we will have new institutional repositories, but we really need to train professors, scientific com community to publishing new international standards for inter institutional repositories as also to be published there. So uh, on the basic to integrate the scientific community into the library work. Yeah. Okay, in, uh, we, uh, in this project we have also institutional repositories in all university libraries in Moldova. For me it's a surprise you build because they already have from two years ago. So I mean for okay. application okay. to, to yeah. explain yeah. the situation yeah. in Armenia. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, but these you know, might be multi-pronged uh, projects or ideas for projects. But maybe we can move on because yes. the yeah. point is the talk is great. The idea I feel is real, but it's, you know, it's not a case of um, maybe one or two EU or three EU partners sitting down to write the project. We really need help in this case. And one of the key questions asked in any application is why do we need this project? It's this country background section. 
So I would ask by the end of the month, if people are serious to participate, that each country, we only need one central contact person from each country, would send us a very brief two or three paragraphs showing why do the country, does the country need this? Is it in some Ministry of Education report? Is it some priority from the government? Is it requested by some professor association, whatever? We don't need to see the document, but we need the title of the document in the local language and in English and the year. And just one or two sentences saying this is regarded as a priority, yes. whatever. But ideal is when it comes from Ministry of Education or Government, because I guess you all know the process. We put in the application. First step, they check the technical. Has everyone signed the mandate correctly? Who's responsible? Second, then they go through the content. And the third thing is for the EU, talk with the Ministry of Education in your home country and say, do you really need this? Is it a priority? So you need to write to us one country and representative, you decide among yourselves by the end of October. Two or three paragraphs send it to the EU colleagues there, and then we have something to go on. Yeah? That's very important. One good idea could be Academic Writing Center to teach them about copyright. And it's more it will be yeah, part, part of it. Of it. it, it Exclude it. Because it's a big issue now. Yeah, but it'd be a function of the, yes. of the center. Yeah? But to okay. think about it. <laughs> yeah. Well done, Jerry. So there was this question about uh, eight ASPI modules, uh, about uh, eight ASPI project modules. As you know, LIT, TPG, PAR, and GSU um, participated in as ASPI project or good partners. And after finishing this project, we we thought like today we are thinking, we are discussing, we discussed about the new project. And within that project, we developed also eight modules. But these, these modules um, uh, are um, about uh, inclusive education. And only one module concerned uh, the library, use the library module, module number three, as I remember. Mm -hmm. And Para was the author, Para developed this module within ASPI project. And it was the, the main uh, uh, base, let's say, to think about a new idea, new project about the LNSS project. So in the, in the report, in the feedback of monitoring, uh, our Armenian NEO representative, Ms. Lana Karlova, mentioned uh, to share these modules with uh, LNSS partners. These modules, eight modules, are available in the ASPI project website. You can see in this, if you want, the, about the inclusive education. You can see these modules and use if you want. In, in a, but <clears throat> this is just for, for reporting our NEO office that we take it, take, took into consideration their comment, recommendation, and we spoke about this, these uh, eight modules also. Now we have a coffee break. And 11.30, we come back. We start to do it so that 2.30 we have reception. И три, три, пятнадцать будет автобус. Подвезет всех в город, в центр города. Если хотите остаться здесь, Хорошо. Продолжаем нашу работу. We continue. Now, Naira, you know Naira, Gori State University. She um, reviewed several times the websites of our uh, university websites and also the project website in general. And now we have her uh, kind report about this report and, and she will uh, show you the final picture of what we have in our universities and uh, the project website design in general. Hello everyone. I was taken aback when I, 10 minutes ago, <laughs> I found out I, I have to make a report on
on the website. But I'm going to speak about uh, some issues only and in general. I'll try to finish uh, earlier. I am honored, more than honored, to be LNSS Project Publicity Manager uh, from Armenia first, then, then uh, Jerry put the responsibility also to review the whole website. As you know, Valeria is involved in it and she's doing all right. She has improved uh, the website, made it faster, more clean color to be more intensive, uh, intense, have more intense colors changed into picture and she's going to integrate some uh, animations to make it more dynamic. Uh, I have already sent you the reviews of the website. Thank you for quick replies and feedbacks, everyone. And some of, some of you uh, made improvements very quickly and some of you were slow maybe because of... I know we have at, at our university we have the same problem uh, connected with the IT and general the texts are very good but the whole website needs to be updated all the time. Mm. Actually, I was going to show you the comparison of the first and second reviews. Uh, many things have changed. Uh, this is the first review. And Armenia. Para is doing all right. And the same was uh, when I uh, did the second review. Uh, all the events are illustrated in pictures, abundance of pictures, and in chronological order. Brusov also, uh, maybe, uh, yes, I put this, I only failed to read more about it. I'm, I'm going through it, and if you have any remarks, you can stop me and interrupt me. And yes, I have a question. You mean, uh, when you wanted to read more, so it failed. It, yes. Yes, because we are uh, we changed all IPs, so we have new IPs. But this one was the first review. Let's go to the second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then it means that the the problem has come okay. <laughs> because I I didn't put it for the second time. Uh, this is about our website. I, I think that this is the best part of our website, actually. Though it's a new one and uh, it's being uh, updated all the time and it has all recently been hacked. <laughs> but it's already recovered. Moldova. Upon. Well designed, you can easily look and read about this or that event on click, not clock. Okay. But I have a remark. Oh, uh You can't, no, 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 it's the same. Uh, after the first review, maybe. Uh, Aleko Russo about the State University uh, was the information, yeah. there was a lack, lack uh, of information, no information about the trainings, the intermediate meeting, awareness day, and quality assurance training. And it was very difficult to read about an event. The texts were a mixture of English and Moldovan. Uh, on the other hand, they have good links to Google Plus and Flickr. And uh, this is the second one. And uh, I have mentioned, put that uh, website has greatly improved. And the information are available uh, and the links are given. So, improvements. Um, do you have anything to add? No, no, no. Anything? No. Mm, but for a wider illustration, dissemination of the activities, English should be used. 
Besides, the working language of our project is English, and this is the second review about Belarusian. Uh, now they are available in Russian and English, though a bit shorter texts. But anyway, it's already improvement. A uh, very good way of illustrating the trainings and events by putting uh, PowerPoint presentations on the website. A little difficult to search for the project detail uh, related events. You have to type the name of the project uh, in the search window and then it opens in a new window. Is it like that? Yes, but we, it's already improvement, of course. Okay, let's continue. Mm -hmm. APA, Belarus, generally a well-designed site with good text and pictures. More detailed information and more pictures would be advisable. And the second one is... Um, I failed to access the information about the trainings and the project in general. When you click on the link provided by our partner, an error appears. What is it? No, it's alright. It's alright now? Okay. Uh, when I make final report, I'll put it. Uh, Janka Kopala, State University of Krotina, only some information about the kickoff. Yes, that was the, maybe the, the information or pictures. The website of PARA is indicated. It was the first one. And now the second. Nothing seems to have changed concerning the project implementation at the university. Very scarce information in Russian and few pictures. No information about the pilot, piloting training at all. The website of PARA is indicated again, so nothing has changed. Has it? Hmm? Was not correct? Ah, uh, then send me the link and I'll send it to Valeria. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, rest. In general, the site is well, or this is the first one, uh, well organized and the information is represented in chronological order. Some have a title, while others don't, which causes confusion. It should be noted that there is detailed information and picks for the pick, uh, purchase of the equipment, which is very good. I'm considering to do the same in our site. I like that. And the second, the second and the last breast, <coughs> the training. Ah, uh, the second review, I, I did uh, it after the implementation of the second module piloting and uh, I put the name as, as you have seen I uh, put the names of uh, modules and the training is represented in details and available in both Russian and English a little tricky to find the English version one remark ah yes English texts sometimes leave much to be desired dismiss that with mistakes and Unfortunately, only PARA and Brusov University have put a lot of information and pictures on the project website. A very good example for the rest of us. Pictures and more information. That's it. And, and one more. We already have our NAT uh, reports and marketing strategies for Armenia. We have our report on NAT2, but we don't have marketing strategy. Moldova hasn't sent, but the girls said that they will send it as soon as possible, because uh, the final uh, the deadline is uh, October 14, 14.
You said yes. Yes. We sent. But that, that October we deadline. We sent two materials. Păi, în, imediat când a fost organizată activitatea, imediat după asta am expediat totul. Uh, uh, we sent. Ah, yes. Valeria, maybe Valeria hasn't put it yet. Um, yes. But that, that October deadline that you're talking about is a financial deadline. It's not a... But also for the... For the uh, final version of the website. Who put that there? Valeria. All right. <laughs> no, and Galarus uh, is doing all right. Not reports and SWOT analysis. Că nu noi postăm acolo, dacă ne-ar fi oferit okay. posibilitatea. And also the teams have... <coughs> yes. Armenian takes to share it here. Uh -huh. And today I sent, for example, to Jerry. Did you send to Jerry? Yeah. You should have sent it to me because I need to send. Uh, I collect all the information and send it to Valeria. Totul am expediat. Absolut totul am expediat. Okay, thank you. Dar nu ei, că ea nu, nu ea postează acolo. Noi am expediat lui Tereza și am expediat lui Jerry. Da. She sent okay. to Teresa and Jerry. Thank you. She sent to Teresa and Jerry. So yeah. you have to send to Naira. Naira se ocupa de site. Naira no se ocupa de site. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
or before they leave tomorrow is who's going to do it because uh, otherwise the agency will come back and they will not they won't be satisfied with the website and I've seen that report that you've done uh, I've seen it before and it, it's quite good but it's, it really is emphasising what's been done in the other partner countries you know somebody needs to sit down at the LNSS Armenian website and do a similar process and sees all the content there because we'll have to do the same with the Western Balkan ones mm -hmm. um, and we have difficulty with that even you know so there's something for you to do in the afternoon thank you any comments or remarks half a business yeah? I mean well we send it all the information up <coughs> yes I would like to and mention we send to you to Kunin and to Teresa every 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 information about our, our modules then I'm not aware of our it. activities our this day Мы все следили на этом сайте, но они так и не появились, поэтому у нас возник вопрос, почему их нет еще до сих пор. И оказывается, это же наша вина. А куда они ушли тогда? Значит, надо высадить еще раз Валерию и все. Значит, выслать Валерии еще раз все материалы. Можете ей тоже выслать, да. Да, мне не надо, мне. Потому что она мне дала код, там, See, we got that. I am not the website, so you have to read it. And then we can we'll have a quick yes. critique of what it is. Is that oh sorry, is that back is that live now? Посмотрите. Yes, and that all goes to yeah, and exactly. But see, the problem. This has to appear on the main website. There is an internet access here. Website. All right. Okay, so maybe we could show up the website. You can show here. No, no, no. If you could show up the LNSS Armenian website. That's it. Okay, so can we expand it? Right, it's down there, look. Okay. Yes. No, you can kill that. That's an advertisement on the bottom. Click X. No. Valeria promised to put more pictures and animations in order to make it more dynamic. See, I think, you know, what the ladies are talking about <coughs> here is that the, the packages that were sent, you need to put, like, the stuff that's sent from Moldova or the stuff that's sent from Belarus and all that, mm -hmm. all that content, if you can, it, it might be very difficult to do it at this stage, but if you can, all that content should be up on the website, all clearly identified as what it was, when it happened, you know, who attended, and all these things. And all of those links and all of those, all that content needs to be up there, you know, with all these activities. Otherwise, you know, you have 
a kind of a synopsis of what's actually uh, the project is about. And a synopsis after three years is not really good enough, you know. So please send all the documents to Naira. Naira has an access to the website and she can work with Valeria. Yeah. Because it was hard work, mm. we were working on our policy, the collection development policy, and really I'm very interested if everything is okay, and maybe we have some mistakes, some issues, we need to change something, and the same with dissemination plan, also... Uh, who did you send it to? We sent it to uh, Teresa, I can check the email, I don't remember, I can check the email. Okay, yes. but, okay. But, okay. But, but I would like, like to mention that it is done, yes. and I think it is the project as well of the project. And we need to know if we need everything is correct. See, at this stage, can I, can I just mention? Yeah. See, at this stage of the project, right, this is the final meeting of the project, and this is part of the process to make sure that we have everything right, that we have uh, all of the deliverables done, uh, that we know the timelines in relation to budget timelines and uh, deliverable timelines. Now, there's a, a point. Uh, later this month where the financial component of this project will end and unfortunately we won't be able to do anything with that because you won't be able to spend any additional money after I think it's the 12th of this month. But in relation to quality of documents, quality of websites, quality of um, you know deliverables, that's something that has to be decided before we leave here today. So it might not have been done, I didn't see it. I, I have no idea who you sent it to, but but th this is why it's important that when we leave here today that we know that it will be assessed uh, and you can get comments back on it, you know, because it's not just your collection development policy, it's all of the collection development policies are up on the website. You know, or like they're up, but they're, yes, absolutely, but all of that material has to be assessed. Uh, and that we have to come up to an agreement of when that will be done because the final version is not until December. See, the final version, everything that, like you could nearly say that a lot of what we've done is still in draft mode, you know, like, and what you have to do is you have to, you know, uh, come up to the, the very end of the project and make sure that what is done is actually the finished product. Yeah. No, no, no. So like yes, it's like their final version. And this is why I'm really interested to know if we need to work more on this. Because yeah. we are expecting that. So, we, um, uh, just to say that we inform you that not all partners have sent this dissemination and exploitation report here and about the library collection development policy first of all thanks Manolis for his kind support and these links and sample uh, collection development policies because partners did not have any imagination with this, this collection development policy documents but uh, the last uh, document I received only uh, several days ago from our partner last partner that's why we need time to finalize all, all together. And uh, regarding your your file and Valentina's file, that, that, that is that are the most. Uh, I, now I cannot make a comparison because I don't have yet the old documents. But they look very very nice, Valentina's and Anna's documents. So please uh, send me. You know, I don't want to mention the names, but I need all 
final uh, exploitation and uh, dissemination reports. No, not 10%. The, the last half cost that remaining. And I will speak about that. So you, you have to spend the, the, the remaining amount uh, by the 14th of October. Okay. And what did I just just on the dissemination, they are still coming in. Uh, Teresa sent two or three reminder emails. So, I mean, we could set another deadline and then just put it up. Ex university there to submit. No, because we've emailed them. <laughs> Yes, but I believe again it's very important to appear on the website also. Sure. Okay, but can I, can I just add to this as well? Just because, in case there's any confusion, the, the partnerships, the partner countries are responsible for X amount of material and X amount of work. Uh, and then when, all, when the project is actually finished, it's, it's what we actually have to do is to look at all of the materials and all of the deliverables and make sure that they meet what was actually set out to be done you know, in the application stage, in the mandate. So it's not just one particular document or one particular part of a website. We have to look holistically at the entire project and make sure it meets the, what we actually got the money from Europe for. Uh, so the review of those documents and the assessment of those documents each of the European countries have a responsibility, you know, and each of the, each of us, you know, we all, we've been given work packages to, um, you know, to as kind of oversee or help to oversee with the partner countries, um, and you know, we'll come back to you before the end of the project, and we'll say, look, this is okay, but you need to. You know, I know you said that yours is the final version, and I've no, I, I didn't see it. That's not, I, I have no difficulty with that. Uh, but there might be other partners that might have to do some more work on documents, or there's documents that haven't been received. If we haven't received the documents, that's not okay. You know, if, if there's documents that are outstanding, the deadlines are deadlines for particular reasons, so that we can actually move on, so that we can get to the end stage and we all cross the line together. We can't cross the line with uh, seven partners and one partner not finished. Everybody has to finish at the same time for the project to be successful. So we can't leave anybody behind. So it's up to the European partners and Theresa to come back to individual partners, country partners, and to say, you haven't done what you, you were asked to do. Do it before deadline. It's not pleasant to have to go back and remind somebody, but if you do, you have to tell them that, for, unfortunately for us to actually achieve our objective and get the project successfully over the line, we have to go back to you. We asked you, I'm not saying to any individual by the way, but if we've asked you and if we've given you a deadline and then if we ask you again and we give you another an extended deadline, unfortunately we have to uh, achieve <coughs> the objective. So. If we ask again, it, it, it's more than just ask, you know, it's, it's kind of a demand. May I just uh, reply one thing? Yes, of course. Uh, for example, our all modules are now on the website. Yes. yes. But I don't know if anyone received any reply about the quality of module that is already on the website. Yes. First. The second, we really study, we li li really learn something. And we need to know if we did it good, if it is okay, or we need to improve something. Yes. I don't talk about the last document. Of yes. The, I'm just talking about the whole project document. Yeah, the feedback. Because it's already visible, it's already on the website, and maybe we need to improve something. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this, this is the this assessment. Is only my comment is just about it. 
yeah. just to know if everything is okay. Because the whole world now can use our models and mm -hmm. I really want, I'm responsible for the model I developed. So I just know to, I just need to know the, the quality is, is okay, yes, yeah, I agree. Working and as experts. Yeah, that's right. Regarding the modules that are available in the project website, so we have um, done uh, two uh, pilot trainings and two observations by our EU partners. They have monitored, came to our universities, looked at the presentations, all the documents, and they submitted us their uh, reports, observation reports, which was positive. So that's why these modules are uh, appeared in the website. But in answer to your question, there are eight modules on the website, and you develop those modules, and actually Cork, and myself, and Gerald, we were discussing it this morning, so regarding those modules that are on the website, we're going to review them. For example, the permit group is responsible for one and two, so we're going to review the content. The other EU colleagues will review the modules that they're specialists in and we'll compare and contrast with it will be done. But the first thing is, you know, it's like when you deal with Brussels. You ask for forms and they expect everything to be sent in and then they will do the review. It's like equipment. You don't send in three now and three in a few months. When all the equipment uh, <coughs> quotations or tenders are in, then they evaluate it completely. But first, we need all materials, and then we sit down and do it properly. But not bits and pieces. So, my dear friends, it's the last opportunity to speak with all of you. I'm a bit sad. Yeah. But I want to say that you have been very lucky. I used to work in very many projects, and this project is uh, one of the most user friendly, <laughs> I would say. And uh, the atmosphere within the consortium was very nice, was very friendly. And thank you, all of you, for this attitude uh, towards uh, the Consortium of Administration, and I want to say that you were very, very lucky because you had the result. Believe me, no, it's, seriously, believe me, it's very important to have this kind of coordinator. So, uh, I wish you in future that you had, uh, that you had this kind of uh, experience and, and uh, motivation as you had here in this LMSS project. You know, it's, uh, for me it was very, let's say, unusual to be a part of this consortium. Thank you, Teresa, for this opportunity. And I think that I did my best. And the overall situation of the project, I would say that it's okay. If you remember, it was about three years ago when we met the first time in Brasov, and uh, it was my first meeting with you. I said that if we begin doing everything in a proper way from the very beginning, the end of the project will be also very, let's say, pleasant. So uh, we did our work all together. And uh, if we translate everything into figures, we are in a good situation. So, first of all, I want to tell you uh, that according to the Erasmus Plus regulations, uh, we received, the consortium received only 90% of the budget, okay? But the 10% will be sent by Brussels after final revision of the financial uh, report and only 10% of eligible costs will be transferred to the coordinator's account and then the coordinator will send to the partners. 
But if we want to, to receive this uh, 100% in total, and this remaining 10%, we have to show that we have spent this 100%. But those who couldn't spend this uh, amount, they will receive less money. Yeah? It's logical. You have 90% on your account, of your budget. If you, I repeat, if you spend less than 90%, you will not get 10% and you will have to give back to the coordinator what you haven't spent. That's the case. We don't like it, but we have to do it. It's the regulation, yeah? So, I want to show to you the overall situation, because I understand that you have to know <coughs> where we are, and where all of you and each of you are, and so, let's see, okay? First of all, I want to say that uh, I have to send the final, fi the final financial report to, to Brussels. And I have to reflect all the expenditures. Up to today, I, I don't have everything. And I ask you to send to me all the remaining documents to be reflected in this file by the by 20th of October. You have two weeks, more than two weeks, to send to me the documents. But, but, you have to pay, you have to finalize your financial operations by October 14th. Okay? After October 14th, you cannot pay salaries, you cannot pay for travels, etc. But, there is one exception. If you have some agreement or some contract signed during the project timeline, you are allowed to make payments during one month after, after the uh, closure of the project. So, if you have agreement signed on purchasing of equipment, equipment or on uh, sub, sub contracts, okay, if it is signed before October 14th, okay, you can pay before November 14th in this period of time, but not after. Okay? Is it clear? If money is paid on November 15th, even if you have the contract during the project timeline signed, the expenditure will be non-eligible. Okay? Please take care of it. So, uh, I have uh, introduced all the information in this uh, table information that I have up to date. Because when I receive the, the remaining information, the figure will be bigger, yeah? But at the moment, I can say that we uh, receive, we, we spent um, 666,205 uh, 666, euros. And it's uh, about it's about I oh, know sorry 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Opa, here you can see better Opa. it's about uh, eighty four percent of the total budget and it's about ninety three percent of the received budget and it's okay. And when I receive the final figures, it will be, the, the, this will be bigger, yeah? So, I can, here you can see the percentage, how much did you spend, each of you, okay? My congratulations to Romania. We have to, to check a bit because I have zero, zero. Yeah, you, oh, sure. you, you have overspent a bit. <laughs> 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 and Jerry is 9999. <laughs> no, no. Wonderful. So, uh, we have to talk about it. Okay. And uh, the case is that uh, we have to 
to be uh, aware about the fact that if, if I repeat, if here you have less than 90%, you will never get the, the final 10%, okay? My dear colleagues from Leeds, I, I think that we'll speak about it because uh, we are in a trouble in I, this situation. No, I think the, 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 what's happening there is that I think all of that is staff costs, or most of it. Which you know, uh, yeah. for it, I, as, you, as you remember, uh, the first day I told you that I cannot consider expenditures expenditure if, if I don't have supporting of, documents. Of course, yes. As soon as I receive supporting documents, the figure will be changed. Sure. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but but uh, take into consideration that even if you pay all the staff costs, it will not be 90% of your budget because you spent less on travel. Yeah? And you should have give back money to the coordinator. Yeah. yeah, I think we dealt with that. With yeah, we'll, we'll speak about it and we will... We'll, okay. in, in any case, we'll, we'll have to deal with this issue, okay? So, uh, as soon as uh, I receive all the information, I will make the final version of the financial statement and I'll send it to Teresa. And one thing, when the final report, with narrative part and financial part, is sent to Brussels, they will review it. So, they will not review all the expenditures, but they will select from each university, from each partner, some of the uh, expenditures. And will have to send to them the supporting documents. So, we will look through them carefully before sending. And I would, and if there is some, some, if there is something to be changed, I will inform you and you can change it. And it's very important, one thing. We need to send everything in English. It doesn't mean that we have to translate all the invoices or all the agreements. No. We send them in your languages, but with notifications or with notes in English. Just to explain what is it, you know? Otherwise, they will send it back with some question marks, okay? So, it's, um, just, I, I told you, that I spoke just only 10 or 15 minutes, but it's a work of hours and days, I would say, to collect all this information and then to put in these files. And uh, I think that uh, we are okay. We will receive very good feedback. And the, I'm more than sure that uh, the non-eligible expenditures will be not zero, but low, okay? And uh, let's cross our fingers. I wish you all the best mm -hmm. and just keep in touch. And I ask you, if I send to you some requests with this, with additional information, please respond, okay? Is it okay? If you have any questions, I'm here. Thank you very much. Here you have, my dear friends, uh, uh, one thing, one thing, it's very interesting. I have also this magic file about the, uh, the uh, about uh, the detailed information of our expenditures. And, wait, here you can see, it's, it's amazing, you know? Here you can see, see uh, how much was spent on staff cost in total. In total. Uh, but it is only 31% of the total budget. Can you see? Uh, we spent on travel costs 79,000 and it's 11%. It's so 
little per percentage. And, but the most is on equipment and on staff costs, and it's, it's okay. It, we are in line with the regulations of EU. We, could, we, are, we are not allowed to, to spend more than 40% on staff costs. That's, that's why I say that we are, I would say, looking very carefully just not to, just to avoid any complications, okay? If you are interested, uh, I can send to you, here's the accumulated information about each of you, how much did you spend on staff costs, on travel costs, yeah. and how much was it in percentage, okay? And I can say that uh, we did it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mama. So, please send the, 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 the general file to everybody and to each partner their expenditures. Thank you very much. Uh, but we have a week to spend our staff cost and to send Manana missing documents and translations, not the translations as Manana said, that, that, that I'm going by this way. I, let's say this is a payment order. I, it is in Armenian. I write payment order in English, number this one, amount, two million, let's say, uh, date, yeah. receiver, supplier, and purpose of payment. And that's all. That's it. You don't need to translate the whole document. And that's enough for one. Yes, it's enough. For me, for them as well. For oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Any questions, Manana? If you have any questions, please. Yes, uh, it's, a, it's a common question also. Uh, when we have this uh, uh, money uh, left on our budget uh, from travel costs, because we made savings, uh, we report one amount, but in reality, we have the uh, real cost less than we report, the unit cost. In this case, uh, your universities can use this money according to your needs. Sure, you cannot buy shoes or some flowers, but you have to, to use this money for projects' needs and for your university's needs, okay? In some cases, in, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. In, in some cases, we uh, had to pay even more than it was envisaged that we were balancing everything. But in majority of cases, you have money. I, I mean Belarus, Moldovian, oh, and Armenian yeah. uh, friends, because our trips from uh, Goris to uh, Yerevan, uh -huh. I report 180 euro, but in reality it's 20 euro. And, the rest is to cover other ticket costs, for example, when you travel to Greek, Greece. It's more than 360, and that's why you could pay just less the case. But in case of our uh, colleagues from Europe, it's on the contrary. You pay it even more than it was envisaged, and sorry. Okay. So. We put it, we take part in the project, we have to deal with this. It's so, but for our friends from former Soviet Union, <laughs> you know, it's where, in this case, we're in better conditions. Okay? Yes. So, so you, you can use this money money and just for needs of your university. So I'm more than sure that you need, that all of you need. Okay? So, and uh, the last point is that uh, in future, if you need something related to Erasmus Plus project financial management, even if we are in the same project or if we are not, just don't hesitate to contact me. I'm open and for friends I can do it. She's the best advisor. <laughs> you have participated, presented, you have done work before the conference, so you can spend this money on send to Manana. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, no more questions? Uh, Rubika, we have a lunch now? Yes. Okay. We have one for lunch. You and Jerry Cullen. Yes. 99.9% over there. 100% in the Romanian. Distinguished partners, dear rector, let me pronounce the start of the final ceremony of our final management meeting of LNSS project. It is time to sign a memorandum of understanding between uh, libraries of partner universities from Armenia, Moldova and Belarus. Nine partners, nine heads of libraries from partner universities. So let's start the ceremony. Uh, open your documents, the page of signatures, find your university name, and on the line, sign and write your name and surname. Thank you very much. Now our young ladies will help you to continue this ceremony. You
Thank you very much. My congratulations to everybody, all who is present here and all partners and guests. You are familiar with this document, you received and read it and you know what is it about. It is going about further collaboration in future and I think that you all are ready to continue this cooperation and have new results, new achievements in library work. Thank you. Let me ask the rector to <coughs> speak with you about this nice ceremony and our future cooperation. Mulțumesc foarte mult. O să încerc pe aceea că am văzut la procedura de semnare. Thank you very much. I would like to start with the fact that during the signing ceremony, I saw. Atâtea camere de filmat că probabil nici la forumul Guam nu sunt atâtea reporteri și atâtea camere de la I saw so many video cameras that probably at the Guam forum there are not as many as there are here. Mă bucură faptul că în cadrul Academiei de Administrare Publică a avut loc acest forum și s-a încheiat acest proiect. I am uh, happy to say that uh, this uh, our meeting, final management meeting, took place in our academy and uh, is, uh, is finalizing at the moment. Rămân în speranța că cele cunoștințe și bune practici care au fost preluate de dumneavoastră în cadrul acestui proiect Um, I hope that the knowledge and the skills that you have learned uh, during this uh, uh, project real project will be a real help to all the participants in this project. Sper că ați sau plecați din Republica Moldova cu o imagine foarte bună. I hope that you leave the uh, Republic of Moldova with a good image about it. Sper că v-a plăcut și Cricova. I hope you liked Cricova. Tot atât de mult cât v-a plăcut și Academia de Administrație as Publică. As you liked the Academy of Public Administration. Împreună cu colegii de la bibliotecă vreau să vă spun că Together am with the colleagues from the library, I would like to say preluat foarte multe lucruri frumoase din acele instituții unde au mers ei that we took over so many good, nice things from the institutions where they, uh, which they visited. Ce degeaba vreau să vă întreb dacă v-a plăcut biblioteca, că e, se întâmplă exact ca și cu studenții. In vain it's that I want to ask if you like the library because it's exactly like in the case of the students. Ați fost la bibliotecă? Nu, încă n-am reușit. Have you been to the library? And they say, no, we haven't managed yet. <laughs> the same is the case. Sper să aveți această ocazie să vedeți și biblioteca care este parte a acestui proiect, care a beneficiat de pe urma acestui proiect. I hope you will visit the library because it was part of this project. Eu am fost corectorul dumneavoastră în bibliotecă și i-a plăcut foarte mult acel, acea parte din bibliotecă care a fost creată cu suportul proiectului. Uh, I went to the library with the rector from Armenia and he was very much impressed by that part of the library that was created with the help of this project. Iar la capitolul, iar la capitolul realizări, vă urez tuturor succese. What uh, regards achievements, I wish you all great success. Sunt sigur că fiecare dintre dumneavoastră și-a găsit o mică părticică care poate să o preia în activitatea sa. I'm sure that each one of you separately has found something little that can take and implement in the future um, career. Și probabil toți împreună avem același scop. And we all together have one and the same purpose îmbunătățirea calității serviciilor acordate de bibliotecă, to improve the quality of the services provided by the libraries, și ca rezultat, 
Îmbunătățirea calității învățământului. Cred că și în alte țări, ca și în Republica Moldova, I think in other countries, like in the Republic of Moldova, loc de mai bine este întotdeauna. There's always room for improvement. Și ca recunoștință, doamnei director de proiect, vreau să emanez certificatul de participant la această conferință. And as a recognition, I would like to hand the, the certificate of participation to the director, uh, uh, to the coordinator of the project. <laughs> Iar ca amintire de a, despre Academia de Administrare Publică, acest mic capăt, pentru biroul de administrație. Nu știu ce urmează după program. Vizita la bibliotecă. Deci, probabil, doamna Sobetski, Vizita la bibliotecă, ca și la studenți, trebuie făcută înaintea sesiunii, ca după aceea să aibă timp să aprecieze această muncă care ați făcut-o pe parcursul celor trei ani de zile. Vizita vizit to the library follows and I think that Mrs. Sobetski have to take it to the library first, not to happen like in the case of the students, that they go to the library after the examination. In Moldova, and the final conference we have here. We really enjoyed your country. We really enjoyed your hospitality. So I think maybe for some people it's the first time, but not the last time. So I hope uh, the our projects will be going on in future. And so we have now very good friends in Moldova and I hope that this tradition of our cooperation will have future. But anyway, I would like, maybe this is the last uh, time we're all together here, and uh, first of all to say thank you to all members, to all our partners of this project. First of all to Mrs. Hechuan, the coordinator of the project. She um, gave us the mood of the project for three years and it was really in a warm, warm relations. We all love each other and this is the most important thing. We were very successful during three years of our project and I think the best result we gained from our coordinator. I would like to say thank you to our European partners, experts. We learned a lot. We really did a huge work. When we turn back and look behind, we really see a huge, huge work did by all of us. I would like to say thank you to all our partners from Belarus and Moldova. So it's so pity that it's the last day. But I hope we meet so we have our contacts, so we will be in cooperation, in contact, we will keep in touch. So thank you and thank you my team and my Armenian colleagues to make this project not only professional development but also in some moments in some ways like a holiday for all of us our meetings thank you so much thank you very much, thank you very much. probably you partners also want to to say something <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I suppose uh, I'll just say a few brief words for our European colleagues. Uh, it's been a pleasure for us. I think I can I can talk uh, for everybody from Germany, from Romania, from Greece, and from Ireland. It's been our great pleasure. 
Uh, we've worked before uh, in Armenia. Uh, we hope to work again in Belarus and in Moldova. Uh, we've visited all three countries many, many times, and every time it's been a great pleasure. Uh, I'd like to thank the, uh, the Institute here for the hospitality uh, and the very warm reception and the very nice gifts. It's, uh, it was unexpected, uh, and it's a great pleasure. I'd like to thank Teresa. I think she's done a great job as a coordinator. I'd like to give her a round of applause. If everybody could give her. And just reiterating something I said this morning uh, about building a network of libraries. And I think it's fitting just for the closing ceremony that we remember. Sometimes that, uh, you know, when somebody comes to visit uh, a particular country, uh, they may be brought out for, for the photographs to plant a tree, you know, and that tree is there for, for the next hundred years, you know, and you know, you see it all over the world, like presidents go and visit and they plant a tree, or the Pope goes and he plants a tree. Uh, I think we should be proud of ourselves, uh, particularly the participants, for what they've done, because you've planted more than a tree. You've planted, uh, you know, you've planted libraries, and you've made libraries very important in your own country. And that will not only stand for today or for next week or for the next 100 years, but probably forever. So I think that's something that you should be very proud of. So again, I just say goodbye to everybody. It's been a pleasure. You're, I said it at the closing ceremony uh, two weeks ago, is that I think we've met a lot of friends uh, over the last three years. And the saying in Ireland is like, you know, our friends are like stars, you know, they're like stars in the sky. You don't always see them, but you know that they're there. So, thanks very much. Bye. I see tears. <laughs> Please don't cry. So, we will collaborate, we hope very much. <laughs> Again, many thanks to the host university, the rector and your team. now at, at Public Administration Academy of, of the Republic of Moldova. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.